Yes, sir. Here we go. Oh! Yes, sir. We are live and we have a lot of feedback for some reason. It's Chris Strub here, the Giving Day Guy. That was the problem. Had the tab open. Welcome to the premiere episode of the Social Good Hour. My name is Chris Strub, the Giving Day Guy. Coming at you, of course, live from the Fly the W studio here in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. Just picking up the confetti here from our big open. Um, I want to welcome you, of course, to the very first episode of what will hopefully be a long-standing fun partnership with our friends at Restream.io. And shout out to my friends there, of course, right off of the bat. I'm nervous. I got the butterflies, guy. I got the script. I got the popper. I got confetti all over the apartment now. This is wild. This is crazy. Um, I do want to uh, just quickly give you a quick rundown of what the show is going to look like today. And then when we get into future episodes each Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. GMT, we'll just be diving right into it. We'll just dive right in. But today, of course, is episode one. So got to give you a little bit of context. So we've got a bunch of fun stuff coming up. Um, most of the, again, clearing off the confetti here. No, do not reload site. That would have been a disaster. Um, most of the uh, the episodes that you're going to be seeing will have a live guest in what we're going to call the main event slot, the main event, which will usually start about 20 minutes after the hour. Um, we will have our very first guest um, next week, and I will reveal who that's going to be at the end of today's show. But for today, for today, um, our guest uh, is you. And um, with the help of Restream.io and their awesome live studio, um, we're going to bring you into the show right now. Check this out. This is how we can uh, press a quick button here and run uh, your chat stream right along here alongside me um, as I'm uh, broadcasting here from the studio. So as you post your comments on uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter or Twitch, I'll be able to show your comments on the screen. Just like, there you go. Very first comment. This will be a trivia question at a bar one night. Mark Mason says, hey, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Jonah says, OG live stream. Ah, yeehaw indeed. And tons of thumbs up. So you can see your comments will actually show up on the stream uh, to the right of the screen here um, with to um, our friends at Restream. Now, you guys are going to play a very, very important role here in the show. So uh, Jonah, Mark, everybody else who's watching, um, we're going to, uh, right off the bat here, we're going to show you um, how to get a show going. And this is going to be my favorite recurring segment of the show here. Um, we're going to call this, um, tell me something good. Tell me something good. And we're going to open each episode of the show with uh, Tell Me Something Good. And uh, Tell Me Something Good is exactly as it sounds. So you guys are going to have five minutes, five minutes to tell me something good. And we're going to celebrate. I don't know if I have enough poppers to go through for every single comment, but you're going to tell me something good in the comments, and we're going to celebrate that. Um, I recognize that 2021 is a challenging time, and it's very important for us to um, think about the good things that are happening in our lives. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go back full to me here for just one moment. Get Jonah's comment off the screen. We are going to... We are going to put five minutes on the clock. Forgot my iPad is going to lock here. But you'll see this throughout the show. We're going to put five minutes on the clock, and we're going to allow you to uh, tell me something good. Ready? Tell me something good. 
Jonah. I can't wait to hear what's in Jonah's neck of the woods. Mark, tell me something good. The premiere edition. My buddy, Dan Gingis says he is super excited for this first episode. My something good is you, Chris Strub. That is so, so humbling. Dan, I appreciate you. Thanks for bringing so much goodness into the world. Awesome. Great first comment. Look at this. I think we're seeing some people who are very happy for their health. Mark Mason says he is, he is very happy that everyone is healthy in my home. Definitely a good thing. Love to hear it, Mark. That's awesome. I just got another COVID test today. Uh, I'm 11 for 11, tested negative so far. Uh, hopefully today I'll make 12 for 12. Um, so hopefully that'll be something good uh, for me too as well. Come on, keep those comments coming. This is your five minutes to tell us something good. We want to hear your good news right now off the bat. This is your show, not my show. Tell me something good, Philip. Here we go. Philip says, Everyone at home is healthy, survived another day of work at home, and school at home. Love it. Love it. That is something good. The small wins get us through. Exactly, Philip. I love it. Cheers to my friends in York. I got my York hat right over on the wall over there. I should have had everything. I should have had all my stuff within reach. I can reach over and show you the props and everything. But I've got my York Revolution hat. Definitely looking forward here to... Um, Getting back to York for Give Local York that first week of May. Scott says, you've tested more than any human I know. I think you like your nose poked. Yes, it is something good to go get tested for free here in South Carolina. Scott, tell me something good, my friend. How did your show go? I saw you got a ton of uh, audience interaction this morning while I was waiting in line for the show. I saw Scott Ayers, my buddy Scott Ayers, hosting his show on Restream. Tell me something good, Scott. How did it go? Neil says, hey, Chris, looking forward to this. Neil, you're part of the show, buddy. We got two minutes and 40 seconds. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Five-minute opening segment. Tell me something good. Tell me something good. This is your minute and two minutes and 20 seconds. I want to know what is going on in your neck of the woods. Mark says, six for six, all negative results. That's awesome. You can't beat that. Batting 100 or batting 1,000. Batting 100. Yes, in the Fly the W studio, I say you're batting 100. Scott says, yeah, here we go. My show went great. There were four of me on the show at one time. That is amazing. The only thing better than Scott Ayers is four copies of Scott Ayers, the carbon copies. Chris Bryant says, loving the background, man. So much going on. I dig it. Chris Bryant, tell me something good, my friend. You got 100 seconds. Tell me something good. We'll throw it up here on the screen in the comments. This is your segment. Tell me something good going on in the world of Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant with a C. Of course, Chris Bryant with a K just signed his one-year contract. That's also something good going on with me, a Cubs fan, of course. Your uh, doppelganger, uh, Chris Bryant. Scott says he's two for two in COVID tests. That's good. Neil, my buddy Neil says his mom got a vaccine last week. That's a great start. Neil, that's awesome. My mom is getting her vaccine in about a week and a half. Uh, last week, my grandma got her vaccine on Tuesday. And then two days later, my dad got his first shot of vaccine on Thursday. So shout out to Papa Strub. Uh, grandma, not Strub <laughs> on the mom's side. Um, but I'm sure mom and dad will be watching later. Um, love, love, love seeing them get in line for that vaccine in New York. Uh, here we go. Peter McDonald says, today I'm grateful for friends and family. PMD out in the AZ. Six feet above ground is always a great day. Cheers, brother. Five for five negative tests. Look at all you guys staying clean, staying socially distant, wearing your masks. Love it, love it, love it. Chris Bryant says he just had a nice gear upgrade, camera, et cetera, for the business. Hey, same thing here. You can see the sharp camera here. I also upgraded the lights. You see, I got double lights going on here. We can actually play with the lighting scheme. Let's go all blue here for a few minutes. We got 10 seconds left. Tell me what's go going on in your world. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We're counting down to the end of Tell Me Something Good, and we'll move on to the next segment. Hey, Chris, there's your final comment.
Should have tested the bell before the show started. I've had people somehow confuse me for Chris Bryan on Twitter. Naturally, I've had to have fun with them. Hey, if you're going to get confused with someone, I think the former NL MVP is a good person to get confused with. We'll move the clock back off here. As we say thank you to all of you for participating in our very first Tell Me Something Good. Now you know next week. Bring your good news. We'll be ready to share it with the end. Uh, we will get you on the show right away. It is time now for my opening monologue, which we give you five minutes to chat. I'm going to put myself back on the clock here for five minutes. And I want to talk about how we are all in this together. Look, I understand that this is a very, very difficult uh, time in the world. Um, not breaking news there. You know, as I think back on the last 11, 12 months, um, I just want to acknowledge the pain and suffering that uh, a lot of families out there have had. Um, more than 400,000 Americans have died of the coronavirus in the last year. Um, tens of millions of people have lost their jobs. Um, I cannot tell you how grateful I am uh, to be here, and we'll talk more about that later, um, hosting this brand new show here on January 25th um, in a place of privilege, to be honest with you. Um, but as I throw on the bright yellow shirt and the hat, I got the logo twirling behind me and everything, um, I just want to solemnly remind you that um, we're all struggling in our own ways. And I'm not exempt from that. Um, you know, I really hope to create... I'm sorry, Scott, I see your comment. I really hope to create a forum here where we can get away for a bit and you can smile and you can laugh and you can think about these things that bring you joy. Through this show, I hope to introduce you to many of the people that I've met and many people that I haven't met around the US, around the world, who have brought me joy over the years through my travels, through different uh, social media conferences, through uh, different events that I've hosted. Um, I've been very, very blessed over the last five plus years to um, have partaken, to have really been a part of a lot of really wonderful things um, in this industry. And I want to share my joy with you. You know, my job, my job technically in creating a sponsored show here with Restream is to encourage you to use Restream. <laughs> Quite honestly, we're going to talk today in the main event about ways that you can launch your own live show. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here in episode one in the very first monologue. My goal with this show really is to bring you joy. And whether I know you and I've met you, Scott, Peter, Paul, it's not like I'm running down a 70s band here. Whether we've met in person, whether you've seen the moniker at Chris Strub on a social media channel somewhere, maybe you've read one of my books or uh, we cross paths at a conference somewhere, whatever it is, I want this to be a place for you to come every Monday and smile. And I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. If you know my story at all, you know that every step of my journey has been crooked and a half a step back and two steps forward and experiment here, try this there, this didn't work, th that didn't work. This episode will not be perfect. I think the opening run of the show for the next few months won't be perfect. 
And my goal in continuing to do this show every week is never to be perfect. But as we'll talk about in the main event today, it's to be better than I was last week. And much more importantly, it's to bring you joy. I take my responsibility in this space seriously, but I also acknowledge and I recognize that you being here with me is just as important, if not more important, than me turning on the lights, shooting off the poppers. So thank you for joining me. That's the monologue. We once again move the very, very high tech countdown clock off the screen. And we've got some more segments to go. So um, some of you guys may know that I have written um, a couple books. This is 50 States, 100 Days, the book. Um, this is the story of my 50 state 100 day adventure in the summer of 2015. If you haven't heard my story, um, I've done a gajillion podcasts and stuff about it. I'll probably do a, an episode of the show about 50 states 100 days at some point because there is a lot of curiosity, especially from strangers who haven't heard me talk about it. But um, every week we're going to do a trivia question and uh, you're going to have a chance to win a signed copy of the book. So I'm going to put the trivia question on the screen. I'm going to read it out loud to you and then we'll put it on the screen. The very first person to comment correctly, let me acknowledge your comments here. Um, Josh is smiling. Chris says, love this whole thing. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Well said, Chris. Thank you. Um, and again, my condolences um, to Scott and your family, my buddy. Um, I'll tell you, there, there wouldn't be a social good hour without Scott Ayers. So um, your friendship means a lot to me, buddy. Thank you, Scott. So here's the trivia question. Let's get that comment off the screen. Hide message from the stream. There you go. This now defunct mongoose-themed live streaming mobile app launched at South by Southwest 2015. This now defunct mongoose themed live streaming mobile app launched at South by Southwest 2015. First one to get the answer right wins the book. If you've already won the book, if you've already read the book, you can send the book to somewhere, somebody else. And we've got a winner. It's my buddy, Biz Paul. Biz Paul says Meerkat. Meerkat is correct. Way to go, Biz Paul. Correct answer is Meerkat. You can claim your prize by emailing me um, or better yet, you can tell me where in the US you want me to send this book because mailing a book over to London is pretty dang expensive. This Paul will figure out how to get you a book um, or how to get a book to maybe a library of your choice or whatever you'd like to do. I see everybody else chiming in there correctly with Meerkat. Mark says Meerkat. Scott says Meerkat. Um, Chris Bryant says Meerkat. Um, I love that you guys are all chiming in from different um, places here. Christine Gritman says, oh my God, Chris Strub and Biz Paul, I'm in heaven, heart emoji. Grits, it's wonderful to see you, although you just missed the trivia question. Before we get into the main event, the main event today, we're going to talk about how you can launch your very own live show, and I'm going to walk you through 10 steps. So we got a lot to cover here. I do want to take a minute to acknowledge our sponsor today from Restream. Restream is the tool that I am using. Um, and I will tell you, I love Restream. I've fallen in love with it. It's amazing. I mean, you guys can see it. You're talking about it already in the comments. Um, you see the cool background, also designed by the team from Restream. Let me tell you the two things that I love about Restream um, as we put this up um, on the uh, screen here. Um, I love Restream mostly for two reasons. One is this. The comments coming up here on the screen next to me, marvelous. From all the different platforms, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. If you're watching on Twitch, by the way, cheers. Not too many Twitch subscribers yet. I think we're at two. Um, but love, love, love the way that you can compile all these comments. If you followed me for years, you know that the one reason that I never wanted to multi-stream was because I couldn't put all the comments in one place. And Restream has solved that. So to see all these comments here, I don't know of anywhere else where really you can 
pile all these things together, make it look this nice. So shout out to the team at Restream for that. Part two, what I love about Restream here, I'm actually just going to read this from a chat that I was having this afternoon um, with Sean from Restream. So Sean, shout out to you, buddy. Sean is one of the many uh, amazing people behind the chat bubble on Restream's website. And Sean, in his very last message to me signing off here today, said, I'm glad I can help to answer questions. We are here 24-7. Let us be your personal assistant for streaming. Come back anytime. Sean and the, the help team at Restream, when you're getting started with streaming, what you really need is someone to kind of hold your hand. There's always going to be a learning curve no matter what you're doing. If you can't figure out the tech stuff, the team at Restream has done a magnificent job of really putting people in place to answer your questions. And I've been streaming for five plus years now on mobile and everything. Restream has really put people in a position to be able to answer your questions 24-7, 365. to help you get through those challenging questions that you couldn't figure out. The tech support at Restream is unlike anything I've ever seen before. So I'm very grateful to the team at Restream. And uh, as a reminder, you can get your um, free trial of Restream at restream.teamstrub.com is where you can go, restream.teamstrub.com. That's where you can go to get your free trial, sign up. We got a quick message from Restream and I'll be right back. There you go. That's right. Yes, I see you guys uh, really talking up Restream in the comments. I love to see it. Um, again, if you want to get your free trial of Restream, you can go to restream.teamstrub.com is where you can go. Restream.teamstrub.com. A um, couple quick uh, housekeeping items that I forgot to mention before, before we get going. Um, look, I see a lot of my enthusiastic friends are here. Um, if you would like to actually introduce an episode of the Social Good Hour, here's where you're going to go to do it. HTTP colon double backslash intro dot teamstrub dot com. So we'll get those intros going next week. Intro dot teamstrub dot com. You can film a little five to 10 second video on your phone and you can be a part of the show and help us introduce um, each episode of the Social Good Hour. And if you're interested in being a guest on the show, if you know someone um, either in the nonprofit space or in the social good space who you think would make an excellent guest on the show, have them fill out the um, guest intake form at guest.teamstrub.com. And that is where you can go to submit either yourself or someone from your organization as a uh, potential guest on the social good hour. There you go. So um, let's get into it here. It is time for the main event. It's time for the main event. I dropped the bell. Hold on. Told you I need to, I need to get a better bell here. It's time for the main event. The main event today is how to launch your own live show. Again, I've got 10 steps that we're going to run through here in the next 20 minutes. So we're going to do this relatively quickly here. Um, but I'm going to give you 10 really big uh, pointers here on how you can launch your own live show. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I got there. We're going to change back to uh, change back to blue here. I think I like the blue a little better in the background. I felt like I was in a Kentucky fried chicken there for a, a few minutes. Step one, I did, I dropped the bell, buddy. 
<laughs> um, step one, watch a whole lot of live streams. This might not sound like rocket science. And if you're watching the social good hour, hey, you're a step ahead of everybody else. But if you're inter interested in starting your own live stream show um, and you haven't watched hundreds of hours of other people doing live streams, then you're way behind. Um, when Meerkat and Periscope launched in 2015, um, I experimented a little bit with live streaming on my own, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, yeah, by the way, uh, I'm going to continue to get um, sidetracked here. At least he didn't drop the ball. What you didn't see before, Neil, was when I like hit the keyboard, I accidentally hit the refresh button on Chrome, which would have stopped all of the streams and ruined the whole first episode. It was like, are you sure you want to refresh the tab? No. No, I don't want to do that. Like, That is not what I want to do. That would have been a disaster. Anyway, watching a whole lot of live streams is our first tip. Um, there are tons and tons of creators out there. Uh, if you go to my Medium page, if you look up Chris Streb on Medium, you can find I've written blogs about literally dozens of live streamers, many of whom are still out there. I saw Chocolate Johnny was streaming, for example, uh, a couple hours before this. Um, I know Scott Ayers' show was this morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Owen Video is uh, my sort of opening act here on Monday afternoon. Uh, love watching Owen's shows. Um, Stephanie Liu is another great restream live streamer. Um, I could do a whole episode just on talking about other streamers, which we will do. Uh, but make sure that you're investing your time in watching a whole lot of other live streams and picking up on things that you like that those creators are doing on a regular basis. Step two. Step two. We got to fly through these. We got to fly through these. Here we go. Be a very active commenter. And again, a lot of you guys here in the comments, as you can see to the right side of the screen, are way ahead of the ball. Um, I love actually building relationships through the comments of live streams. And as you can see here, as you see me continuing to check um, the comments here uh, on the live stream, every time I look over here, I'm reading the comments and then I'm looking in the camera. So sorry, I need to get Ross Woods to give me that thing where I can just look straight ahead and still see the comments. Um, you can actually build some pretty great relationships in the comments of live streams. Live streamers um, who are successful will always acknowledge and always listen to those who are watching and pay, paying attention in their streams. And so um, if you are an active, engaged commenter, trust me, that's how I earned a ton of kudos back in the Blab and Meerkat and Periscope days. It's not just about your own live streams. It's about how you can give back to the community. And being an engaged commenter is a really wonderful um, opportunity to, yes, there's, uh, there's Dan, by the way. Let's get Dan up there too. The Experience Maker Show uh, every Thursday at noon Eastern on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Another great example of uh, a show that you can learn from that Dan's been doing for a year. And Dan, of course, is my boy. Um, yes, Gretz says she's, uh, some of us are commenting on two separate channels while also answering emails. And uh, Chris Bryant says he has taken notes. We love that. We love that. I'm going to figure out after the show here if I'm going to turn all this into a blog or, or what, but um, 10 steps. And of course, we got the 10 graphics built. Here's step number three. Make sure you have clearly defined your audience. I want to know as you're describing to me what your show is, who exactly your audience is. And you've heard it before, but the riches, the riches are in the niches. It sounds cliche, it sounds silly, but it's true. The more defined your audience is, the more you're going to be able to find other people exactly like your target audience, like your, your target viewer, and they're going to come in and want to continue to watch with you. You know, my target audience, again, is a lot of aspiring live streamers, a lot of current live streamers. Um, and as I defined in the monologue today, it's people who are struggling, people in this marketing live streaming industry who are having a hard time of it and who need some uplifting. So Christine Gritman, this is your hour. Peter McDonald, this is your hour. Biz Paul, this is your hour. I'm here to help uplift you guys, and my hope is to find others like Grits, like Dan, like Paul, who are, in, who are feeling those similar feelings and who want to come to a place here every Monday afternoon or Monday night over in the UK and be uplifted. So clearly define your audience. Make sure you know exactly who you're streaming to um, when you decide to lay out your show. Step four is to pick the right 
platforms. Now, again, here's another opportunity for me to talk about Restream. Um, I have uh, built audiences across all these different places. Maybe you're watching on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, wherever you might be watching. Um, one of the fun things about Restream is that you are able to um, pick all the platforms at the same time, which is something that I couldn't have said a month ago um, because I wasn't really using Restream. So if you, um, and I'm foreshadowing to a future tip here, step 10, which we'll get to in a little bit, but um, make sure you pick the correct platforms to stream to. You don't have to stream everywhere to be successful, but I would definitely recommend if you're going to put all your eggs together and create um, an awesome experience like we've done here uh, in conjunction with Restream for the Social Good Hour um, to choose the right platforms. Step five, step four and a half is grab a sip of water and I'll review the comments here real quick. JS says, hey, from Canada. I can still see your uh, comments here. Blake says, Chris, congrats on the new show. Thank you, Blake. My man in Etowa, Tennessee. Back in the day, we were going to launch the Strub and Blake show. Would love to watch more live streams. Please share or DM me with show info. Yeah, if you guys have other suggestions, here's where you guys can help me in the comments too. Remember step two, if you've got other live show uh, examples, um, one great place to look, Mark, would be the Restream um, YouTube page um, where you can um, see, let's see, where you can actually see a lot of the other um, Restream sponsored creators. Uh, my show is debuting here on uh, my channels. Maybe someday we'll be on the uh, the Restream channels um, but um, Restream has really done an excellent job of recruiting a great stable of shows. Uh, you know, my favorite might be Owen Video. The guy is just incredible. Um, 3 p.m. Eastern every Monday, including today. And you can go back and watch some of his previous episodes as well. Okay. Let's uh, keep an eye on those comments here. Um, you guys are talking to each other across platforms, which is how cool is that? Mark says, thanks, Chris. I'll check it out. Awesome. Chris says, she stopped simulcasting to YouTube because she hadn't done the work in building an audience here, but Twitter, I sure have. So I simulcast my Facebook live show there now. Yes, Gritz has another uh, excellent example of a live show. I think she might be launching another live show this week. So Christine, you have my full permission to put in the comments. Let us know uh, when and where we can find your live shows. Um, go ahead, drop it in the comments. Let me know as I move on to um, number five. I like being hydrated. Commit, commit, commit. I cannot overemphasize how important it is to commit to consistently creating on an episodic basis. I've talked about this in trainings all around the United States, uh, virtual trainings everywhere, committing to a consistent theme and considering, con made it 35 minutes without swallowing my tongue, committing to a consistent theme and an episodic theme is far and away the most important tip um, to creating a successful live stream show. You know, it can be very difficult to commit um, sometimes if you don't, first of all, feel like you um, don't have an audience um, or if you're struggling for different themes, which is why, again, I'm not generally a big fan of social media content calendars. I don't love planning out social media content months and months and months in advance. Um, but, um, you know, I think it is definitely okay to have a list of topics, um, that you can plan on streaming, um, on a consistent basis. Um, lining up guests is another great way to do it. Um, as I mentioned just this afternoon, I've confirmed, three guests for the next three weeks as we kick off Black History Month here in the U.S. Um, so committing to a consistent broadcast schedule for me again here on the Social Good Hour. It is every Monday, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. GMT. So step five, commit, commit, commit. Step six, this is important too. Get your mindset right. I really want you to think about the energy 
that you are translating to people through the camera when you're live streaming. Think about carefully how you want people to feel when they watch and they engage with what you're doing. I've been very upfront about wanting to set this positive, uplifting, motivational, inspirational, go get them sort of tone. And I really hope that that continues to come across here throughout the course of the entire hour. And really, I hope that that comes across every single time you see me, whether I'm walking down the street or at Orange Theory Fitness or presenting at Social Media Marketing World or wherever it might be. I want you to get your mindset right. And think about that energy level that you can convey to your audience. I've watched so many live streams that just put me to sleep because they're not conveying the sort of energy that I'm looking for as a viewer. So I know what, what I'm looking for. I want to feel the way that I just described. I don't, I'm not, there's so many different things that you can watch on the internet that if you're not, if your day isn't being improved, if you're not being enriched, if you're not learning something from what you're watching and what you're listening to, then why, why would you watch it? And from a creator's perspective, why would you create it? Right? So when you think about clearly defining your audience, step three, and then getting your mindset right, think about the mindset that your audience wants to be in and help them get there. It's important. I'll make one more point about that. Get your mindset right. There's a lot that I do during the course of a day, of a week, and of a year to get my mindset right. I mean, I've got three Amazon devices. I won't say her name because she'll yell at me here while I'm streaming. I crank up the volume here in my apartment and I'll play music and I'll dance around. I'll make sure that I'm eating right, particularly on the day of a stream. I took a long nap this morning to make sure that I was fully energized. After the show is over, I'll have to go lay down and decompress. And we'll, we'll get life back together for next Monday. But getting your mind in the right place, I can't overstate how important it is to take some time before your stream to put yourself in a position to really convey that energy that you're looking to impart upon your audience. Now, I'll tell you, again, episode one here, the three songs that I cranked immediately, I was listening to a lot of Aerosmith this afternoon as we were getting ready, but the three songs that I played in like the 15 minutes right before the show started were American Authors, Best Day of My Life, which I just, I love the feeling that that gives to me every time I listen to it. And then I played Foo Fighters, The Pretender, which I talked about on my Instagram story the other night. I can put that on the screen as well. Played Foo Fighters, The Pretender, which is kind of, I would consider like my life's anthem, my theme song. Chris Strubb, what if I say I'm not like the others? Right? The Pretender. And then I played Congo's Come With Me Now because I was hoping... I was hoping that each and every one of you would stick with me for the course of this show. I was hoping that each and every one of you, what is that? There you go. Congratulations, you've re received 100 messages today with Restream Chat. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Get a little like award. All right, let's keep those comments coming here. I know you guys are listening carefully, but um, make sure if you haven't already, let me know where you are watching from. I usually ask that at the outset, but I'd be very curious to hear, although I know where many of you guys are, let me know where you are watching from. But yeah, best day of my life, The Pretender, come with me now. Trying to get myself completely in the zone for the premiere episode of The Social Good Hour. Step seven, this is a chocolate Johnnyism. Always stream like the world is watching. I probably should have followed that piece of advice, a little chocolate Johnny piece of advice where he's talked many, many times about this, about taking a little piece of, uh, of putty and putting it over the number 
of people that are watching your live stream when you're going along because it can it can really derail you if you're really counting on a certain number of people being there along with you and then they're not. But the real key to creating a successful live stream is to always stream like the world is watching because you know what? Even if they're not watching now, they could be watching later. And you never know who that one person who might be watching your stream is. There's a lot of people out there that'll watch streams quietly, that won't comment, that won't participate. And I don't know if Al Roker is sitting on his couch right now as one of the handful of people that are watching the premiere episode of the social good hour. Maybe he is. Maybe my future wife is sitting at home somewhere watching on her iPhone because I would never date an Android girl. I mean, come on, let's be realistic here. <laughs> but you got to always, always bring your A game. Mamba mentality, right? Kobe Bryant, like, come on. Bring the energy, bring the enthusiasm, whether there's one person watching or a thousand people watching or a hundred thousand people watching. You've got to be you. And that's my goal here every week. Of course, I want more people to watch. Of course, I want you to go to restream.teamstrub.com and sign up for your trial of Restream. But whether it's one person or a thousand people or a million people, this step seven has been very much key for me because if you've watched me or if you've seen me anywhere around the country, you know that I will always bring my best to you no matter what size that stage is. Did it cut me off at 100? That would be bad. No. Neil's watching from Springfield, Virginia. It's snowing in the United Kingdom. Hey, Bizball, quick aside. I got my 23 and me results today. And I, oh, I closed the tab, so I don't have it. I don't remember the exact percentage, but I am a significant percentage from the UK. It's something over 20%. I am also 2.2% uh, what is it? Ashkenazi Jewish. So if there are any uh, friendly Jews watching in the, uh, in the audience today, um, <laughs> I am 2.2% I am Jewish. I am going to call my, my parents after the stream today and ask um, if it's too late at 35 to finally get my uh, long-awaited bar mitzvah. Um, so you never know what you're going to find in those 23 and me, um, results. Chris, of course, is in Connecticut. Uh, Chris says, I think it cut you off at a hundred. Mark Mason is, uh, right in Northern Kentucky across from Cincinnati. Uh, yes. Shots fired, of course, um, at the, uh, Android, uh, fans. 23 and me is a, uh, it's a DNA test that you can take at home and you, uh, you, um, mail it in and it tests your saliva and it tells you a lot um, about yourself. This uh, stream not sponsored by 23andMe. However, it is, uh, yeah. Hey, 2.2%, 2 2.2, don't forget that 0.2%. Mazel tov, indeed. Step eight. I want you to upgrade your gear piece by piece. Now, again, as we walk through these different steps, um, you're probably picking up uh, what I'm throwing down here that we will talk more about each one of these steps much more extensively in future episodes of the Social Good Hour. But when we talk about tech, just to sum it up here in, in two minutes or less, my journey to building a studio like this has very much been piece by piece. And as you can tell with my super low tech bell, this is actually from, can I show you where this is from? This is from um, Disney World. This is from Tower of Terror. And it's one of the many things that you see behind me um, in the Fly the W studio on a regular basis. Think about tech like you're going to the gym and you're trying to build each muscle up sort of one at a time, right? So it becomes super intimidating 
unless you got a, a, a massive budget somewhere, but even if you do have the budget for it, I still wouldn't buy everything that you need all at once because you're not going to be able to see the differences that each piece is bringing to the quality of your stream. Um, I've got uh, my site. It is um, strubstuff.com where you can go to uh, check out all of my uh, live streaming gear. I've got my mobile set of gear in um, that the travel case behind me. And then I've got uh, a lot of my stationary gear here um, in front of me. Um, you can see all the different gear that I've purchased over the years at strubstuff.com. Um, and you can check that out at www.strubstuff.com. But don't don't go into it thinking that you have to buy everything or even anything. You know, I really encourage you to get started, stream, and then upgrade piece by piece and figure out what it is that you really want and need to um, improve what you're doing. Step nine. Now, I encourage you to go into your live streams with a plan, but I also encourage you to know when to adjust and when to stay the course. So for me, after the stream is over, I'm going to go back, probably rewatch it, um, which is a big step for me because for years I couldn't rewatch what I was doing. Couldn't rewatch it. And so just to be at this point now to be able to rewatch and re-listen to what I'm doing is nice. I still hate the, the, my, the sound of my own voice, but it's going to be what it's going to be. But you have to know when to pivot, where to pivot, and what to stick with. Right. So all these different little aspects of what I brought into the show, I'm very curious um, to hear from you guys what you liked and what you didn't like about the show. Even if you're watching on replay, please, please, please leave it in the comments. Let me know um, what you really liked and what you didn't like, what you might change, what I can do better. Um, but each week, we're going to tweak. Each week, we're going to do things a little bit differently. That is what the greats do, that they will always look at their performance and say, and look critically and think about what they could have done better. And every every aspect, every word that I'm saying, everything that I'm wearing, everything that's plugged in, every color in the studio around me and every item on the wall behind me, every last little bit of what I'm doing today, I'm going to scrutinize. And then we're going to bring back and we're going to try and do it better next week. As I talked about, commit, commit, commit. But make sure you know when to adjust and when to stay the course. And finally, I encourage you, and I want you to think about this existentially, to be platform agnostic. Be platform agnostic. And I'm not talking about just creating, you know, simulcasting, multicasting, whatever phrase you want to use. I'm not just talking about creating the same content, putting it all over the place. I'm talking about you. You, let me put my finger in focus here. You, I love this camera. You as a creator, as a human being, should strive to be platform agnostic. So when I go and walk through Rockland County, once it's not in a Andrew Cuomo red zone anymore, and I see Christine Gritman walking down the street, and I recognize Christine from her show, I want to see and feel and experience the exact same sort of human in real life that I would on her show. And then when you dive into the social media aspect of it, if you send me a tweet, let me keep all these things handy here. If you send me a tweet, if you send me a DM on Instagram, if you comment on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever it is, you're getting Chris Strub. Right? So, be platform agnostic, be the same person across all your different platforms, no matter what your content strategy is. That has been the number one tip for me to be successful, not just in live streaming, but in the social media industry. Be platform agnostic. Don't try and shape shift and change who you are based on the fact that you're on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. You be you. And when you're the best version of you, that's what's going to get you to move forward in the live streaming space. So let me take two minutes here to check your questions. Time for questions here. And I want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything on my um, rundown here. Uh, if you guys have questions, please throw them at me here. Um, Biz Paul, this is a great question. This might bring us right to the end here. How critical are you overly or do you think you're a fair critic of yourself? 
Great question. I would say that I'm definitely overly critical of myself. Um, I think that's uh, in part because of the life that we've been living here through the last, let's change colors here for the end, we'll go green. I think that there's been a lot of self-doubt introduced in all of us um, over the last um, year here as we've all been locked inside. I've taken a lot of my encouragement and my, my pride and my confidence from getting a chance, quite honestly, to hang out with people like Biz Paul and like Grits and having those real life interactions. So for me, launching the show now has been an emotional journey to try and build myself up back mentally to be in a space to do this. And I've had a lot of people, I've been very, very blessed for people to say some very, very kind things and, and even having made people cry at conferences and stuff over the years um, with 50 States, 100 Days of the Film and the book and all this stuff, the Fight for Good tour. Um, it's very humbling. But I, I personally draw energy from those real life interactions that have been sort of missing over the last couple of years. What's up, what's up, what's up, Rigor? Hey now. You'll never come visit me. I'll come to Rockland County. Chris Bryant left a very long comment here. Um, didn't like, um, if I had to pick something. All right, I'm going to go back and read all of your questions here. But be like Chris Bryant. Make sure you leave some feedback. Um, and also, um, again, big thanks to our friends at restream.teamstrub.com. That's where you can go to get your free trial. As I bring back on the countdown clock here, we are going to put five minutes on the clock. And it is time for my closing thoughts. Oops, that was the wrong button. With sincere gratitude. I don't know about you, but I send a lot of emails. And I don't know, a year, a year and a half ago, um, I decided that um, instead of trying to come up with a customized sort of sign-off for each email that I was sending, I would sign every single email with sincere gratitude. And if you've gotten an email from me over the years, you've seen that. And it's not just an idiosyncrasy. It's not just something that I put there. I mean it. I wouldn't have this show without each and every one of you who've been here today. I wouldn't have this show without a whole lot of people who have opened a whole lot of doors for me over the years. I wouldn't have had the chance to fly around the country. There's one audience member in particular here today who gave me an opportunity to fly over the Atlantic Ocean and go keynote an event called Marketed Live. I don't know that I can ever properly express my gratitude to each and every one of you for the attention that you've given me over the years. So I wanted to take five full minutes here at the end of the show just to say thank you. All I can offer you is my sincerest gratitude. And also just acknowledge, again, my imperfections. Acknowledge, even especially over the last year, maybe I haven't been as um, communicative or as um, creative or output as much or said yes to enough things or... Um, I'm doing the best that I can. And the theme that you've heard, I hope, throughout this, the course of this show is wanting to be 
better today than we were yesterday and wanting to be better tomorrow than we were today. And so I'm sincerely grateful to each and every one of you who have taken the time today out of your busy Monday to watch, to listen, to engage, to share, to support, to be here. And to those who are watching on replay till the very end, I appreciate you just as much. To those who may be watching this years from now, thank you too. I mentioned before, you know, I listened to The Pretender before the show. I'm not trying to be like the others. I'm just trying to be me. And that's all I've ever tried to do. That's all I can ever be. And, um, This last year has been really friggin' tough. I didn't check with Restream. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse or not, but you know me. So I pledge to you, I'm going to continue to do my best to make this show the best experience that you guys can have week after week, month after month, and hopefully longer than that. And I'm sincerely grateful to each and every one of you for taking the time to be a part of it here today. That's our show, and I promised a hard stop by 5 p.m. The show will never go a second over an hour, and that's what we're going to do today. Please join us next week. Our guest is going to be Hannah L. Drake, who I'm going to get emotional just thinking about how powerful an experience it's going to be to get a chance to introduce her to each and every one of you. But make sure you're also following Hannah on Instagram and Twitter. Hannah Drake out of Louisville, Kentucky, just an unbelievable human being to help us kick off episode two. And really, um, thank you again. I appreciate you. And I will see you guys and leave you with this comment from Neil. Should block it off on our calendars? Yes, you should, my friend. I'll see you next time.